news team that's covering the Carolinas. This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News Midday. The first Ebola victim from West Africa has landed in the United States. We now know that victim is Samaritan's Purse volunteer, Dr. Kent Brantley. We're watching and monitoring this from Georgia. And almost one month after a local teacher was found dead inside her apartment, police have a suspect. Plus, North Carolina lawmakers have passed a $21 billion budget. Now it waits on Governor Pat McCrory's signature. We'll have a live update from our state capitol. Good afternoon, I'm Sarah Rosario. We are following many important stories for you this midday, but we want to get a look at our forecast first. Taking a live look outside from our Charlotte camera, the clouds still hanging around this midday. Mark Taylor is in Severe Weather Center 9, and Mark, how long will this rain last? Well, Sarah, not all day, and we'll talk about that warm up in the clearing coming next week. Right now, Samaritan's Purse volunteer Dr. Kent Brantley is back in the United States. The medical transport plane that he was riding in it landed about an hour ago in Georgia. Take a look. This is a live picture from our sister station in Georgia. They are following the ambulance that has Dr. Brantley in it, and they are taking him to Emory University Hospital, where both Ebola victims will be treated in special isolation areas. Brantley contracted Ebola while working with a Christian humanitarian group. The agency spokesperson says they hope Hope to bring Charlotte missionary Nancy Reitbull back to the U.S. early next week. This will be the first time ever a patient with Ebola will be treated in the United States. Dr. Brantley's brother lives in Atlanta and he says he's happy. His brother is being treated with top medical care, but he says he's also filled with compassion for the hundreds of others who are sick. I feel bad for all those people there that are dying and they're scared and they can't even get what we would consider poor care. You can learn more about the Ebola virus, including the symptoms and treatments, by going to our website, WSOCTV.com. We have new information this midday. Newton police say they now have a suspect in the murder of a local school guidance counselor. Maggie Daniels was found dead in her Newton apartment more than a month ago. And Eyewitness News reporter Tina Terry is live at the Newton Police Department with the latest. Tina, what can you tell us? Tonight, two of the world's biggest soccer clubs will face off at Bank of America Stadium. Eyewitness News saw fans already gathering in Uptown last night ahead of the game. Police expect more than 60,000 people to be there tonight when Liverpool takes on AC Milan. Channel 9 spoke to one fan who made the trip from Atlanta. Living in Atlanta, it's a short drive. I heard Charlotte's a great city, uh, so why not? City officials have deemed today's game an extraordinary event. That means police have more leeway to question people with suspicious items, and certain things will not be allowed inside the stadium. Bright colored balloons fill the sky above Rowan County, a sign of hope for dozens of people that missing teenager Erica Parsons will be found. Erica's biological mother, Carolyn Parsons, planned this vigil last night and says she will never stop searching for answers. Wednesday marked exactly one year since Erica was reported missing. It is also the same day that Erica's adoptive parents Sandy and Casey Parsons were arrested and charged with fraud a total of 76 federal counts. On Wednesday, a federal judge released the Parsons on bond, but now both of them are wearing electronic monitoring bracelets. The Parsons cannot break any laws while they're awaiting trial and they must remain in the eastern part of the state. Again, they're facing fraud charges, not charges related to Erica's disappearance. Kannapolis police hope so Social media will help them try and fight what they're calling a nuisance home. They say they've responded to more than 60 calls for service in the past year just to this house alone on 200 Rose Avenue. They were called out for things like fights, weapons violations and disturbing the peace. Police posted a picture of this house on Facebook so that neighbors would know why they've been in the neighborhood so much. They say they can't kick the residents out of that house because that has to be done through the courts. South Carolina's tax free weekend is now underway while North Carolina is going without the holiday for the first time. How much you can save if you cross the border.